Welcome to BYO Guides, home to the Finder Guide series. Today I want to show you how to use Coral Finder 2021, the new edition of the tool that takes the mystery out of coral identification. Here's our example coral which we'll identify and use to demonstrate some of the features of the Coral Finder. To get started, just learn the nine terms in blue in the visual glossary, instead of the hundreds of terms in use by professional taxonomists. You also need to know that the skeletal walls that the polyp builds can be shared, separate, or absent. There's a lot of other good stuff in these glossary pages, but this is all you need to get started. Finally, learn how and where to measure corals from this handy diagram. Now, use the key page to search for a key group that matches our coral's shape, texture, or lifestyle. In this example, we're going to use the meandering key group because our coral has clear river-like polyps. The Coral Finder now asks what kind of wall you have. Clearly, they're separated. And so, we're off to Lookalike page 1314. Lookalike pages have a small number of visual best bets for you to choose from. Now it's time to put that big, pattern-recognizing supercomputer of yours to work. Visually, Fimbriophilia or Euphilia look like a good match. Typically, the answer is pretty obvious and you could just read off the name and pour that cocktail you've been thinking about. But just winging it by eye doesn't give you reasons for your ID that will stay with you and build the taxonomic muscles you need for a dive trip to the Coral Triangle. The way to really learn, which the Coral Finder makes easy, is to confirm the key characters in the description on the right hand side, focusing on the bold text and tip arrows. Let's tick them off. Separate walls. Tick. Sometimes hidden by tentacles. Tick. Scepter clean and smooth. Tick. So we're leaning towards Fimbriophilia with Euphilia as a close second. A closer look reveals some extra terms coming into play. Flabello me android. Sheesh. Let's take a quick trip to the glossary. And we're done. Next, tentacle shapes vary with species. Fine, thanks for telling me. But where are the species? Well, page 72 may help. Let's go there. And here's Fimbriophilia in all its glory, including species accounts. So why not on page 13? Well, gentle reader, that's because space truly is the final frontier. Now for some pro tips and problem solving technique. The first thing you should always do after you get a visual hit is to scan the true scale boxes to make sure your thinking is in the real world scale wise. Why waste time looking at something that's the wrong scale? Yeah, we're good. If you're not getting a good visual hit, Try going up or down in scale. Corals are variable and how well you estimate coralite dimension also matters. This tip will resolve many of your outliers. Try another key group. How else could we solve this problem? Hmm, 
quite large daytime expanded polyps looks good. Pro tip, if you get a visual that doesn't quite hit the mark, try the genus index to see what else your candidate beastie can do. With the coral finder, it's easy to go sideways. Finally, if you really get stuck, try reading the comments section where you might find further tips and tricks. So that's your fast start to Coral ID using the Coral Finder. There's a lot more to know which you can tap into through my training courses online or in Meetspace. Subscribe to the BYO Guides newsletter for training dates and occasional groovy feature content. Thanks for watching.